You thought this was gonna be like every other Ocarina of Time video, didn't you? Look at this idiot, guys. He's so in love with this 24-year-old kid that he is watching his fifth review of it on YouTube. Ocarina of Time, released on November 21st, 1998, became the most loved video game of all time right out of the gate. And it has stayed that way for almost 24 goddamn years. It's rated 99 overall on Metacritic, given a 10 out of 10 on IGN, and is believed by many to be the greatest game of all time. My question is, is it deserving of this title? I mean, guys, come on, how, how can Ocarina of Time be number one when Bloons Tower Defense 6 exists? There is nothing better than this. I played this game for the first time when its remasters on the 3DS came out as an eight-year-old Chad, and my reaction to this game was as follows. It was all right. I'm eight years old at the time. I have no idea what game I was fucking playing, man. I literally had no Wi-Fi back then, and I would bring my shitty laptop to a place with Wi-Fi, copy and paste walkthroughs of the game into Microsoft Word so that I could actually beat the game. Because goddamn, no way in hell am I beating this game without some help as an eight-year-old, dude. And that was it. I followed a walkthrough step by step, beat the game, and I haven't looked back on this widely beloved game since. But now that I'm older and have access to the internet, I hear so much about this game. People beg for remasters online despite there already being one. People rant about new and upcoming Zelda games and always say, it won't be better than Ocarina of Time. People love this game, and I don't know why. So that is why I am taking it upon myself to play through the original N64 version of the game 24 years later. No walkthroughs, no Google. I am doing this like everyone did back in 1998, baby. Let's go. Oh my fucking god, dude. Finally, man. Get me out. Ocarina of Time starts off with Link sleeping on his bed, and your first thoughts are, this is the goddamn hero. You run outside, try to get to the great Deku tree, and there's this guy in the way. So you grab a knife and a shield, and he moves out of your way. Funny how that works. The tree starts spitting some shit about how there's an evil taking over Hyrule and that he needs your help to lift the curse he has been inflicted with. Yeah, man, good job asking a 10 year old to help you out with that. You know, child endangerment isn't a thing. But you walk into this tree's mouth, the screen cuts to black, and you see a cinematic shot of the tree. Then the music kicks in, and goddamn, at this point, you know what kind of game you are playing. What Ocarina of Time does best is make the perfect atmosphere. When you walk into this dying tree who needs help so goddamn badly, he has a 10 year old child to help him. You feel like you're in a dying tree. There are monsters everywhere, spider webs all over the wall. The ground and walls itself look like what an actual dying tree would look like. But no atmosphere is built up without the goddamn music. Using the Deku Tree example again, just listening to this music is so eerie and creepy. It makes you feel unsafe and makes you feel that there's something going on. Mix that in with the already creepy surroundings of monsters and spider webs, and it's just mwah, it's perfect. It's something the game nails throughout, not even necessarily just in the dungeons, but walking into Hyrule Field for the first time and hearing this music, this music encourages a goddamn adventure to be had, man. This game's music is just spot on, it all fits so well and helps enhance the experience drastically. When things are sad and emotional, you can feel it. When things are scary and suspenseful, you can feel it. When things are happy and upbeat, you can feel it. But listen, all right, none of that shit matters if you can't back it up with good gameplay, and wow, this gameplay is great. Listen, first and foremost, the controls kind of suck, but like, really, you can't blame the game for that. It's a game made in 1998. If this game was made in 2022, bad controls would be a valid argument, but for a game made in 1998, they're all right. I mean, look at the controller this shit is played on. Does it look like any game controls perfectly with it? It's just something I'd like to point out because goddamn, it's a little frustrating mindlessly swinging your sword when you're trying to stop and target something. Or I mean like look, like, look, look at this pot. Either this pot has god mode or this game sucks. But other than that, this shit is spot on. The majority of the dungeons have amazing platforming, simple but fun puzzles, and relatively simple layouts, and give good hints into solving the dungeon accordingly. The music, the sound effects, monsters, and design all help build that solid atmosphere that I was talking about earlier and it really makes you feel like you're in a dungeon. Only complaint about it really is finding the dungeons and the items necessary to complete them. Like to get to the fire temple, you are supposed to throw a bomb at this Goron and then he gives you the fire tunic, but there was nowhere in the game where it told you to do that. I don't like that, it feels very random. It happens quite a bit. But notice how I said the majority of dungeons earlier that are good, you know. Uh, I said the majority because the water temple exists. Yep. This is my personalized health. 
I know it's a bit cliche to hate on the water temple, not necessarily in a YouTube video, but just in general. I tried going into this dungeon open-mindedly, and I was trying to convince myself that this dungeon was going to be overhated. But nope, this temple's layout sucks. It's so confusing to get around and to remember where things are. That platforming sucks. You have to open the pause menu, equip the iron boots to sink in the water, close the pause menu, run to wherever you needed to underwater. Then pause again, unequip the boots, close menu, swim, and it's just a never-ending cycle of looking at your fucking inventory. This is the exact gameplay that I wanted, personally. Look at these items, they look great. Not to mention having to change the water levels in the dungeon. That in of itself takes time since, you know, you have to go through the same iron boots process of opening the menu. Except this time you have to equip the ocarina, close the menu, then play the song you need to change the levels. It fucking sucks. It has one of the worst mini-bosses I've ever seen. Like seriously, the fight against Dark Link is cool as fuck in theory, but oh my god, it sucks. Everything about it is just gross. It took me three hours to beat this temple. Three. A lot of those three hours was me just fucking backtracking step by step in order to find the mistake I made. Water Temple sucks. If you say differently, you were just trying to be different and quirky. Fuck you. Anyways, the point is all the dungeons are good except the Water Temple. Moving on. The characters in this game are solid, even the side characters are fun. They again help build atmosphere and you know they all say fun and quirky things, even if they have no contribution to the game's story, they are still interesting. The characters that do impact the story, 10 out of 10. They really feel connected to Link and his journey, especially the main villain Ganondorf. Oh my days is this guy scary! It's kind of weird, as child Link you feel intimidated by him, but once you become adult Link that feeling of intimidation just kinda goes away, at least for me. Like, seeing Ganondorf on the bridge chasing after Zelda as Kid Link is scary and I feel intimidated by him, but walking into the final battle against him as adult Link doesn't feel intimidating. Probably has to do with all the amazing buildup towards facing Ganondorf once and for all. And the final fight in this game, oh my god, it feels so intense. It's a struggle even if you have fairies and bottles that can revive you if you die. And even after that, just when you think you beat Ganondorf and the castle collapses and you get out with Zelda, he fucking comes back and looks like this! You lose your sword, you fight for your life, get the sword back and finish him off once and for all. Oh my god, this is a masterpiece. And then the credits roll, your fairy companion Navi floats off, never to be seen again. And then the game freezes at this scene, Link and Zelda just staring at each other. You can't save your game after beating Ganondorf, so they just freeze the game on you. But this picture and this end card just goes hard, bro. Something about it just feels right and feels iconic, even though this is my first time basically playing the game. And that is Ocarina of Time. I can definitely see why this game scores so highly and why people think it's the best of all time. Objectively speaking, it's for sure a top 10 that I have played. In my personal list, you know, it doesn't crack that list. A lot of what a personal favorite games list is, is based off emotional attachment to a game, and it is why it's your favorite. But again, objectively, this is a top 10 game of all time, and it's not close. It definitely deserves the hype it gets, it deserves those scores, and if you have never played the game before, and you know, you, you want to get into the Zelda franchise, start with this one. You will enjoy it, I can guarantee it. But fuck Water Temple though, that, that realistically should take down the Metacritic score down by 6. 